How do you diagnose an ACL tear? You need the history because an ACL, a lot of times the history is uh, they plant their foot, they pivot, they don't even get hit by anybody. It's a non-contact injury and they feel a pop. That's the most common thing we, we see. Yes, there are times when someone gets hit playing football or hockey or whatever, but the most common is a non-contact injury. We're gonna examine them and their knee is usually gonna be pretty swollen because that ACL is inside the knee, deep in the knee. And when it tears, it bleeds and the knee swells up. So it's usually gonna be very swollen. Now, if we can get them to relax, we put their knee in about 30 degrees of flexion. We'll do a Lachman test where we pull forward on the tibia. And if the knee comes significantly forward, like this one does, because this ACL is torn, then we have a good idea that there um, has been an injury to the ACL or a tear of the ACL. We do a test called a pivot shift. It's a rotational test that we can do on physical exam. And if the knee clunks when we're, when we're rotating it, as we bring it back straight, um, that will also be a high indicator for an ACL tear. The problem is these physical exam tests are sometimes very difficult to do when the patient's in a lot of pain. And so the best time to examine them is literally right after the injury. Once the knee swells up a day, two days, three days, you know, a week later, it's more difficult to examine. So sometimes we can't get a great physical exam. So now we go to the next level, an MRI, again, magnetic resonance imaging to look for the ACL tear. Is it 100%? No, but it's probably 95 to 98% accurate. You can also look inside the knee arthroscopically to diagnose it. But if you put all those things together uh, without surgery, we should know 95, 98% of the time, if not more, uh, if someone has an ACL tear before we would even consider going in there and looking.